Well, Gatamu Choco Pro is back. It's season 10. Of course, the main event is the number one contendership for who's going to challenge Minoru Fujita for the Super Asian Championship and many other good matches that they posted out. We even got more Day 15 of the G1 Climax by New Japan Pro Wrestling with a lot of the A Block action taking place. And also MLW, we all know who is the new champion. It appears now that the war between Contra Unit and Alexander Hammerstone is far from over. But however, it appears that now things are becoming apparent. Seeds of Duran is now taking control of MLW. And also got for you guys some news updates regarding Impact Wrestling. Got a new signee. AEW star re-signed with a five-year extension. And of course, two new events are coming up for stardom. And of course, this is something that I definitely will talk about in a little bit at the late. But right now, let's get started with another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, J-Rod here. So, as I mentioned before, Choco Pro is back with season 10. And a lot of things took place in this one. The first match was, of course, a three-way match with Chiko Shikawa versus Masa Takanashi, and of course, versus Rekka. Now, those who don't know Rekka, I've seen him before with Pro Wrestling Freedoms. Uh, there's no hardcore stuff coming up in this particular match, just to be rated right you. But the match was more like, okay, there's some team-ups here, team-ups there, you know. Like, Masa teams up with Rekka, or Rekka teams up with Chi, or however it goes. But however, in this one, Masa... Always prevail when he put both of them in a double submission, where of course Chi had no other choice but to tap out. The next up we have is of course the Black Komanechi, who in fact is Antonio Honda and Tokiko Kirahara, who are taking these other alter egos, but the best bros are not buying it. They act like they seen them before. Now there is no secret that Honda. And Kirahara have been trying to obtain the uh, Asian Dream Tag Team titles, which is something they've been doing about early this year. But this time, it was a fun match. They even played the old tricks they've done. But so far in this particular one, their tricks did not got them any further. Because right now, Best Bros are pulling their way, trying to pro prove they are the best tag team right now. And of course, it was... Balinaki who picked up the victory when he pinned Kirahara and of course May took out Honda in order for Balin to take the, the win. Now our main event is for the number one contendership for the Super Asia Championship which currently Minoru Vegeta is the champion but he's not there. This match was set like at the last episode of season 9 of Choco Pro which is episode uh, number 160. Two, and this right now is 163. Um, Yuna made that she wants to pursue it. So did Chon. Now the match was incredible. I have to say it was more of determination. As you all know, it was already marked on this particular day. Chon Shiru's 17 year anniversary as a wrestler. And I have to say what an accomplishment he's pulled up. And of course, in this one, I have to say it pulled a lot of weight. But however... The match ended in a time limit draw. Now, I know Yuna and Chun did not want this the outcome. But, however, as you know, ever since Emi Sakura left, uh, 
Japan to for pursue, Masa has been in charge in some of the bookings on certain matches. However, he made the decision to integrate himself to make this number one contendership a no um, a no time limit, but also make it a three way. But however, that didn't happen that way. Turns out, Bali and Aki even decided to plea an argument that even though you look at Masa, Yuna, Sean, Balian, these are four wrestlers who, in fact, been in Choco Pro from day one. Who, Balianaki is mostly the one wrestler who's been with most matches since Choco Pro, and of course that's kind of interesting. But however, um, Masa agreed and made it happen. So this is going to be a four-way number one contendership in a no time limit. Now it's still unclear when that match will be taking place. Masa hasn't even uh, decided when will this happen. I don't know if Emmy Sakura will have a say in it since she's currently busy in the U.S. with AEW. Now we get to, of course, the Junkin Tournament. I was still don't know for sure who was going to walk out. But leave it to the one person I did not expect. The Apple Goblin, or who I like to call the Slide Devil. May Shiruga walked out with the piece of chocolate. Now, many people may not like her because she has no friends except for her best bro, Malianaki. But I don't know what to make of it. But right now, there are two more events coming up with Choco Pro this coming Saturday and Sunday, Japanese time. I will review those on those particular days here in the US time. So let's keep moving with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Okay, so we got New Japan Pro Wrestling with day 15 of the G1 Climax. Uh, we normally had a block matches, but of course one match in particular has a forfeit, and that person is Kota Ibushi. Now the opening match is once again is the young lion Kosi Fujita taking on none other than the time bomb himself, Minoru Hin Hiromu Takahashi, you know this match is going to end in his favor. That's always been his play. Now, of course, everybody knows, we all know, Hiromi, Hiromu Takahashi is going to be involved in the Best of Super Juniors coming up soon. And I'm very excited for that particular event that's going to take place. Now, as you know, I mentioned Kota Ibushi has a two free points that he got because of the forfeit in this particular day he should have been facing Tetsuya Naito but Naito is out of action due to his injury they obtained in day one so he's going to face against legend Satoshi Kojima now this was a very interesting match um Kode Bushi had to put himself through the test against a veteran like him now keep in mind when it comes to Satoshi Kojima you know he's a legend you know what he can do he was triple crown champion you know his but I have to say, Kota Ibushi came on top when he pulled the Kamigoye right on Satoshi Kojima, and he won this match. Now, the next four matches are the, ma the B matches for the A block in the G1. First match we got is Yujiro Takahashi taking on the Stone Pitbull, Tomohiro Ishii. Now, you know for a fact this is one of those matches where Ishii is going to win because he is the stone pimple. He doesn't play around. He doesn't joke. Despite the fact that um, Yujiro is dubbed the, the Tokyo Pimp. But, however, the Tokyo Pimp was no match for Tomo Hiroshi until he put him away for the 1-2-3. Now, the next match is Bullet Club versus Bullet Club. We got Tangaloa versus Kenta. Now, at much of the match, Kenta did not want to get involved with Tangaloa. I don't know if there's been dissensions, what's going on with the Bullet Club. I don't know if it's divided. But of course, in this particular match, Kenta would do anything to win. That's his main goal ever since he joined Bullet Club. is winning his matches, trying to get enough gold in his waist as much as possible. And this is one of those moments where he has to do what it's right for himself. But when it comes to that, he found a way to... Pull a fast one on Tangaloa by putting his feet on the ropes, pinning him to one, two, three. Ref did not see it, but however, at the end of the of the match, both Tangaloa and Kenta remain good friends and good spirits. 
Now, I don't know how many times these two have been in face-to-face -face together. But they always put on a good show. I'm talking about the Master Dickhead or the Technical Wizard, Zack Sabre Jr. Taking on the Comedic, the Sneaky Guy, the Trickster, Tomoyo Ishii. You know for a fact Ishii would try to get away with it. Now, Zack Sabre Jr. is no stranger to Tomo Ishii. They have come across each other before on various Q1 events. However, uh, there was a moment where Zack Sabre Jr. seems like he had everything under his control when he handcuffed himself with Yano. The reason he did that was because he doesn't want him to escape. Despite the fact that Yano tried to handcuff in the bike rail, but he failed. Basically, Zack Sabre Jr. tried to keep him down. Even Kevin Kelly was having a little fun with it. He thought they were going to leave having dinner with each other. I don't know. I thought it was so fun. But however, it was Zack Sabre Jr. that put up the arm bar and forced Yano to tap out. But he is paying attention with Kenta, who may be his biggest threat at the mall. So this is going to be interesting. Now, our main event is, of course, the Great Okan versus Shingo Tagagi. Now, this is going to be one hell of a match. It was like, you know for a fact, uh, Khan is one of the most dominant forces, but Shingo has been one of the most powerhouses in in G1 and also New Japan since he uh, jumped to heavyweight. And I think it played out pretty well on this one. I'm very surprised, but however, he was able to put the Pumpy Bomber and the Last Dragon and pinning him 1-2-3. Now, the point system on the A block... Kota Ibushi has about 12 points on this one. Like I said, his two points that he got is from the forfeit that he got from Naito. Shingo, he's now got 14 points on this one. So he's currently in the lead. His determine is to win the entire block in order for him to win the entire thing so he can pick his opponent. Zack Sabre Jr., he has only... Tw uh, 12 points, so he's not that far behind. Yano has about 8. Tomo Iroishi, 10 points. Yujiro, well, he's out. He has 4 points. Uh, Tangaloa, 4 points. Uh, Kenta, 12 points. And Khan, 3 points. So, basically, I look at Kota, Shingo, Zack Sabre Jr., and uh, Tomo Iroishi. Ishii maybe, I'm not sure, I'm not 100% on him, so we got to pay attention to these guys, see what happens in their upcoming event, I will put more on the G1 on this one for all of you guys, because I'm still covering, there's still a lot to cover with the G1, but I think we got the next one, the next day, which is B Block Action, so right now I'm going to end the, episode, the review with MLW. Okay, and we're back with MLW with MLW Fusion Alpha number four. The first match was two competitors who we do know right now are currently going to compete in the Opera Cup tournament, which is going to be awesome. This is more of a preview that's going to take place soon, but the main event is that cup. The match was great. Lee Moriarty, he knows he's dealing with the big dude, but it takes a lot of will to try to put him down. But however, he was no match for the heavyweight hustle in order to win the match. He was always will be impressive. So he picked up the good victory and showed respect to Lee Moriarty. However, we got American top team. Yes, the same guys who've been causing a lot of problems in AEW. King Mo showed up. And he was impressed with Calvin Tankman. He's offering him an opportunity to join American top team. And, of course, the fan base are saying, no, no. But Calvin Tankman's response, he said, I'll think about it. So it's still unclear whether if he will accept the offer. We just got to pay attention in, in the upcoming week, week to come for that. But right now, let's just keep moving forward. As you know, we have a brand new MLW World Heavyweight Champion. And that person is 
Alex Hammerstone. It appears that the war between Hammerstone and Contra Unit is far from over. Once again, we received a little message from Joseph Samael, the, the spokesperson of Contra Unit, is now setting up a date with him to ch uh, challenge Hammerstone in a War Chambers match. Now, if you guys aren't familiarized with that event, that is more like War Games or Blood and Guts. That is some, or the War Games we've seen with WCW, uh, NXT, and of course the Blood and Guts. That's the same thing. However, uh, he's the. We will get to that when we see now. Um, Hammer. It appears that Caesar Durant has been talking to some unknown people, but here walks in Hammerstone. He made the decision to relinquish the, the national open weight champion. Now, as much as we want to see him him succeed, he wants to now focus on the world, the MLW world champion. He is looking forward to make this more of a prestigious title. Now, the national open weight title has been the one title to put him to the top. He's been un he he never lost the title. He had it for over a year or so, or two years. I'm not sure, but right now he wants to give that opportunity to someone else while he's focusing on the title. However, he is gladly accept the challenge against Contra. You know, even Cesar Durant has offered him his assistant to pick his team. But Alex Solo, no offense, no disrespect. Let me find my team. We all know one of them is going to be Richard Holiday. It's n that's no secret. Now, Alicia Atude, as you know, she is the top interviewer in uh, MLW. Recently, she's been trying to put uh, together who Caesar Duran. Now, we all know who he is. We've seen his background. It appears that he's being chased. He left Boyle Heights due to some something going on. But in his office that he had in Boyle Heights, a woman showed up. Now, I'm not going to speculate. I'm not going to come to assumption. But it's still unclear. Now, this is where I'm going to think. There was one woman who had a problem with him. And that person was Selena De La Renta. Now, it's still unclear whether she's coming back. Because the, the last thing we know about her before... Uh, before is she was at the performance center this was confirmed by various sources that she was there but recently she's been doing online uh only fan stuff with alicia to becoming frenemies like having wrestling matches all that stuff but if she's the one who's been stalking caesar I would like to see that. This could lead to a war between who is more extremely violent. Is it her or Durant? Now, our next match is, of course, more of the women's uh, featherweight champion uh, t uh, division. We have Brittany Blake. Now, I find out this was the one who interrupted the interview with the Sea Stars and Willow Nightingale. She is facing Delmi Exo, who is one half of Sea Stars with her sister, Ashley Vox, I have to say, it was pretty impressive. I have to say, MLW are doing something right. I feel that they're giving the women division something that it deserves. Now, you can call me old-fashioned as you want, but I think it's something that we've been expecting for fans who've been asking for this. But Delmi Exo pulled off a really good win. So basically, last week, her sister Ashley lost, but now Delmi was the one who picked up the victory, putting C-Stars on the map. Now, Willow Nightingale, as you know, had an interview. She said she had a blast with Ashley Vox. She's pumped for all this. Now, we all know there is going to be a championship for the women's division. That's only a matter of time until it's been announced. But for now, we just can enjoy what they're doing. Now, our main event was the Opera Cup Tournament opening round. We have the current title holder, Tom Lawler, along with Kevin Koo taking on the American Werewolf. Davy Richards. Now, this was a very impressive match. I have to say, it was so good. Now, Lawler did criticize Davy, saying, you've been gone for seven years. But this time, he was able to pull it off. And of course, now, the best moment is when he had him in a submission 
He was nowhere close to get the ropes. He did not give up. He even flipped off the people saying just tap, who were telling him to tap out. But he ta he faded out. The ref made a decision to call off to call the match, and it was decided that Davy Richards won. Tom Lawler cannot believe it. Did it happen? Now, before the show ended, Richard Holiday was summoned to Caesar Durant. Apparently, he did not like the idea of what Alicia Atut was doing. He's calling her girlfriend, but however, he is now asking him to put the Caribbean title on the line. So basically, Richard Holiday does not like that. I don't know what's the deal, but it appears it's going to happen. He's going to put that title in defense for King Muertes next week. But however, this war between, but before it ended, we saw Injustice, Jordan Oliver and Myra Reed being attacked by 5150, Danny Rivera, um, Slice Boogie, and Julia Smokes, leaving them dead in the gutter. So basically, it's more like this is taking things way too personal. So I think that's pretty much it what we got for MLW. So stay tuned for the next one next week. I'm excited for that, and I hope you guys are excited. So let's move on with some news updates. <laughs> I did mention earlier on the news up for the news updates impact wrestling has a new signee and that person is Masha Slamovich now I wasn't aware of this but this was posted today on well today is the 13th and Slamovich was approached by Gail Kim she offered her contract this was happened right after her match against Diana Prazo at knockouts knockdown I think it was impressive she put up a good match, and of course, it's great that she finally getting an opportunity of a lifetime to be with Impact Wrestling to be a knockout. Now, the next update is coming up is Scorpio Sky re-signed for a five-year extension with AEW. It appears that AEW are, had plan, has plans for him. Now, we do know he's a, a fantastic wrestler. He's been a tag team specialist, but however, he now should succeed as a singles competitor. With his angle with Ethan Page and teaming with American Top Team is probably going to be the good thing that's going to happen. So I'm excited for what they're going to do for him and we'll see where they're going to go with that. Now, the, the last thing I'm going to review is the top I mean, the update. As you know, right now, Stardom has finished with their five-star Grand Prix. We're jumping into the 11th annual Goddesses of Stardom Tag League. This is something that's been happening. Even Tam Nakano mentioned it. However, it's already been announced it's going to take place between October 17th all the way to November 14th. And they already divided the, the girls in half in different blocks. We have the red a goddesses block and the blue goddesses block. So let's see who is in each of the blocks. For the red goddesses block, we have Queen's Quest, Utami Hayashishida, the current Red Bell champion, who will be teaming with Sayakami Tani. You got Cosmic Angels, Unagi, Sayaka, and Mai Sukurai, which, of course, they were successful in one of their matches, or in a match before. We have DDM, Himeka, and Atsupoi. Oda Tai, Saki Kashima, and Fukigen Death. Then we got Azuki and Koguma teaming up ever since their amazing match they had at Osaka Joe Hall. They're going to be doing this for the first time. And, of course, the very unusual teaming, Hanan and Rina. Now, what I meant unusual, Hanan is, in fact, a member of Stars, while Rina, on the other hand, is a member of Odetai. It's very unusual, but I'm kind of curious how these two sisters are going to coexist. As you know, these th two sisters are part of a three-sister set. There's, of course, Rina, um, Ina, who I don't she was out for a while due to her studies, but we'll see her soon. But I'm excited to see how that. Now, let's go to the blue goddesses block. We have Queen's Quest, Momo Wananabe, and Azumi. DDMs, Sudi, and Micah. And I'm surprised that Julia's not even in it. 
We got Cosmic Angels, Tam Nakano, and Mina Shirakawa. This is not the first time these guys have teamed. They teamed up last year, and they were not successful that much. But I have to say, we're going to see some great things with them. We got Mayu Iwatani teaming up with Rin Kadokura from Marvelous, which, of course, is no stranger. These two girls are two of the closest friends, and I'm kind of excited to see this. Then we got Odatai, Starlight Kid, and Ruka teaming up, the only two current champions in Odatai. And then finally, Lady C and Waka Tsukiyama. Now this is, I think, the first time these two ladies are involved. Uh, but however you may notice, Waka, in fact, is a member of Cosmic Angels. So, uh, don't know why, but there are speculations about who Lady C could land up in the team, but we'll just wait and see. So I'm excited for this, but however, that's not the latest update coming up from Stardom. We do have another event coming up before uh, before the end of the Goddesses Tag League. We have the Kawasaki Super Wars, and it's going to take place on the 3rd of November. We have a couple of title matches that's already been revealed. So here are the ones that have already been put up. The World of Stardom title, the, aka the Red Belt, will be put on the line. Where Utami Hayashida will face off Azuki. Now Azuki challenged for this title when Utami defeated her previous opponent. And now she's getting a shot of this title. Then we got the Wonder of Stardom title, a.k.a. the White Belt. We got members of Cosmic Angels facing off. Unagi Sayaka, who recently lost the future title to Ruka, is now challenging this title. But Tam has no problem challenging even her own teammate, which is... Brings in good character. Then, of course, we got the CWA title currently hold by Sudi of DDM. But, however, she is the winner of the five-star Grand Prix. She made also the decision to put her contract for that match against um, whoever's the Red Belt champion on the line against Queen's Quest Azumi. We got the future start on the title, Lady C challenging Ruka. Now, Lady C made this issue challenge right after Osaka Johal when Ruka defeated uh, Unagi. And then finally, we got the high-speed title. Starlight Kid is challenging Momo Watanabe. So that's pretty much it that we have for the news updates. Uh, there will be more to come. Uh, and I will explain something to you guys right after this when I come back. Well, I hope you guys enjoy this episode reviewing me review all of these and give you guys some news updates now before i proceed anything further i will announce i made a decision that if there's any news updates that i was unable to put on the episodes of, re of reviewing what happened in these events uh that will be separate um of course it has its own theme song but i'm using the theme that i've been using right now so that'll be by itself i hope you guys enjoy that when that day comes i was thinking about it for quite some time but uh, the news update alerts will be featuring with, of course, the Terminator theme, which is what I like to do. That's only if something happens that needs to be reported right away because that is something that everybody wants to know. What is going on? What we missed? What we haven't heard anything? If you guys are not following anything on social media. Now, coming up for the next episode, we have, of course, more on the New Japan Pro Wrestling, the G1. We got Day 16. We know this is going to be the B Block action taking place. We even got NXT UK, Impact Wrestling, but I'm also going to review a past event by All Japan Pro Wrestling. This one is part of the Royal Road Tournament, day one on the evening show, on a course that took place on the 15th of August. Now, keep in mind, I'm still behind on certain events, and there's more that are popping up everywhere on Watch Pro Wrestling because I love to review everything. So there's still more to come, and I did mention we do got two uh, Choco Pro events coming up this coming weekend on Saturday and Sunday. I'm excited for that. And there's still more to come on this. Uh, if there's anything else, I will let you guys know ahead of time. But for now, I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.